Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you? Not going to complain. Not going to complain. Not going to complain. You sure? You don't want to complain even? Oh, no, I want to complain. I want to complain about so much. So, so much I want to complain about. But almost none of it has to do with college football or this podcast. So we're not going to go down. We're not going to go down down that rabbit hole. But I want to complain about so much. Just everything that's happening in the world. All right. I think I think that falls under one of our rules here. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It does. It does. It very much does. In our Discord channel, which... uh, yeah. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Always be plugging. Uh, yes. We are here. Sloop Picks week five. Week five of our picks. We have six games to talk about. Uh, the seventh game is the Ohio State one. So if you want to listen to our input on the Ohio State game, check out yesterday's episode where we talk about Ohio State and Sparty. So first up here, uh, six games here. So we're gonna we're gonna head into another Friday night game. We picked a Friday night game last weekend. Turned out to be a really good game. And the week we're before that, stick, and we're go, we're gonna stick to this trend here and pick another Friday night game. This is at you least mean, the third week in a row for Friday night games that we've had on the Sloop picks. At least the uh, third week in a row. Washington going coast to coast. Heading yes, on over to New Jersey to take on the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Uh, 8 p.m. kickoff on Fox. Again, Friday night. The Scarlet Knights are a one and a half point favorite over the Huskies. This is being played in Piscataway, New Jersey. Piscataway. And I only point that up because I like saying Piscataway. <laughs> it's fun to say. And I know how to say it which is a, a rarity on this show that I actually That's get to pronounce something correctly. That is a plus. It is set at one and a half, but the line has gone up by a single point. Just want to note that. Who do you got Jared in this matchup? Uh, you know, I have a rule and that rule typically says when in doubt, go with the underdogs. However, I, I think I think that with it being a Friday and it being a three hour trek for Washington and Washington already being a little uh, this year and Rutgers looking pretty good this year, although not necessarily impressive, but solid. Going to go Rutgers. I mean, our our line is one point. One and a half points, but one point. You don't often see the game decided by one point. It happens, but not often. So I'm just going to pick the winner here. And I think the winner is Rutgers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick Rutgers as well, too. Rutgers has a pretty good has a pretty good defense here. And to the points of what Jared mentioned as well on the road, a short week. Uh, the only the only way this could have made it worse is if it was like a noon game, but obviously they're not going to play noon on a Friday. But <laughs> but yeah, I like I like Rutgers defense. They're 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 sneaky. I don't want to use good, but they're 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 better they're better they're better than they they're have solid. been in the past. They're, they're solid. They're solid. They're, they're a, a solid, solid football team. team. All right. This week's picker is a long time. Uh, one of the longest, one of the, one of the longest uh, supporters of the Sloopcast here, Sun Card. Sun Card here is picking this week, and he has sent us the following: It is it is still hard for me to see Rutgers as a respectable team, but they actually <laughs> are. Yes, Rutgers chops or <laughs> swings so an well axe. Said. Rutgers chops or swings an axe or something and wins by seven. I, I think that's Wisconsin and Minnesota. Yes. I, I, I'm sorry. I was thrown by the axe. He said Rutgers, right? It should have been a sword. It should have been a, should have yeah, been a sword. They're, they're, they're knights. It might be a mace. It might be a spear. I mean, I guess it could be a battle axe. He did say Rutgers, right? He said Rutgers wins by seven. Okay. So, yes. 
All right, second game here. Um, Big 12 action. Noon game on ESPN Saturday. Uh, Oklahoma State taking on Kansas State. Uh, In this game here, Kansas State is a a five-and-a-half point favorite. Am I going first? You go uh, first. I, I will go first here. I was kind of going back and forth because I've seen I've seen how good Kansas State can be, but then also saw how bad they were last weekend as well. And uh, and Oklahoma and Oklahoma State gave Utah a run for their money last uh, to Utah last weekend as well too. So, is this going to be the Kansas State team that's going to be able to? Uh, to score a little bit more points to keep up with Oklahoma State here, but I just I don't really I don't really trust the passing game for Kansas State here. So I'm I'm going to pick Oklahoma State to cover and and I think they'll they'll outright win this game. So I'll, I'll take the Cowboys. I agree. This is this is peak Big Twelve behavior. This is peak Big Twelve behavior. You're, what we are going to have is a total round robin of of victories. So OK State lost last week, so it's their turn to win against the con- conference favorite this week. So you'll have Oklahoma State be Kansas State. We'll get a whole round robin going, and we'll have like a three way tie at the top. That that's how the Big 12 always seems to shake out. And for that to happen, feels like Oklahoma State has to win this football game. So, yeah, I totally agree with Kyle. I, I like Oklahoma State not just to cover, but to win. But hell, if you're going to give me five and a half points to take who I think is going to win, I'm going to take that points. All right. And Sun Card here says, fun fact, I was born in Kansas. Did not know that. Wouldn't have expected it either. Yeah. That being said, I have Oklahoma State keeping this one close and possibly winning. So I will take the points. I hate when we all agree. Yeah. So we're going to be wrong. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Second noon game here. Uh, Fox, this is your Gus Johnson special. Jared's Golden Gophers on the road to take on Michigan. Not my Gophers. Yep. They they are Jared's Golden Gophers. Michigan is a nine is a nine and a half point favor over Jared's Gophers here. Not my Gophers. Uh, who do you got in this one, Jared? See how much fun it is when the other person participates in the joke? Um, <laughs> exactly, Spikes. Um, I got Minnesota. Um, everyone's going to be all hype up on on Michigan because they beat USC last week. I get it. We only thought USC was good because they beat LSU, but we have since seen that LSU's fake good, which we can then translate to say that, like, you know, USC is probably fake good because not only did does their LSU win not necessarily look so impressive all of a sudden, but they also lost to Michigan, who we all know is shit. I'm sorry, and that's not just me being an Ohio State fan. We've seen them struggle against Fresno State. We've seen them lose already this year. I, I don't believe in Michigan. And I and I do not, I want to state this for the record, I do not expect Minnesota to win this game. I do think Michigan wins this game. But with the spread being over two point or over two scores, rather, at nine and a half over two scores, um, I'm going to take Minnesota. If this was like a six and a half, I may have taken Michigan. Nine and a half, I'm going to take Minnesota. Jared, yeah. Minnesota gave up four touchdowns to Iowa. And? I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. Uh, yeah, Minnesota's going to struggle moving the ball. If, if it was anything like what we saw... Um, Michigan did with USC last last weekend. Um, maybe maybe they'll have a maybe they'll have a down weekend this week and kind of let up a little bit. Maybe maybe, but I I I got to go off of what I've seen from both Minnesota and Michigan, and 
past few few weeks here, and I just I do not trust Minnesota being able to do anything at all. They they Minnesota struggles to run the ball, and then they're and they're going to go against Michigan, who does really well in stop stopping the run. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take Michigan to cover. I'm going to point out that Spikes felt the need to clarify that they were offensive touchdowns, <laughs> which yeah. is only a thing you have to do with Iowa. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, I was, ex- I was just making sure that the viewers and the and the watchers – I know that was the point, Spikes. I was I was bringing the the viewers and the watchers in on the joke. All right, um, Suncard here says, "Does Minnesota have a pulse? I sure hope so, because the uniforms are the same color as the team up north uh, played last week. Maybe they sleepwalk their way through the week and lay an egg on Saturday. Out of principle, I'm taking the boat, guys. I am picking Jared's Golden Gophers, not my Gophers." Also, it's really insulting to USC to say that they and Minnesota have the same colors. <laughs> like, it I get nice. it, but no, <laughs> absolutely not. All right. All right. Our next game here. Minnesota has some of the worst colors in college football, aside from Clemson. I, I The purple-orange combo is maybe my least favorite in all of sports. Yeah. But, but Minnesota's I- bad. All right, our next game here, Jared, we will cover after this uh, quick ad break here. So um, if you want to support uh, Jared and I with uh, the Sloopcast podcast here, head on over to the Sloopcast.com where you can find all of our lovely links. Uh, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. If you will become a patron to support the podcast, head on over there. Or if you're not into that and you want to buy some merch, uh, merch.thesloopcast.com. Or even 7071.thesloopcast.com if you're not into the podcast merch and just want to buy some cool Ohio related stuff there. Check that out. Um, a lot of other great links uh, over at thesloopcast.com where you can find all those links and more. Uh, so, with that being said, we'll go ahead and take a quick ad break and be right back. Kyle, I cannot believe that you picked Michigan. I know. I know. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. It's fine. I know. I'm just teasing. Yes. Are you? Yes. Are you? Really? Yeah. Yeah. You sure? I am. Yep. Yep. Positive. Positive. You're not mad at me. (laughs) I am, but for other reasons. (laughs) All right. We're moving on to uh, Jared's Golden Gophers. Oh, wait. We already did that. Uh, Louisville. Not my Gophers. (laughs) See how how much fun it is when the other person participates in the bit? That might be why I'm mad at you. (laughs) <laughs> Louisville <laughs> taking on Notre Dame. Uh, this is also on the Peacock channel here because, you know, it it's Notre Dame. It, you're not going to watch them anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> sure. Is that <laughs> a thing? Dame, I don't know. Notre Dame is a five and a half point favorite over Louisville here. I believe it is my turn here. I... I really wanted to pick Notre Dame here. You did? But man, this this just feels like the game. I know I know they've already screwed up once. I know they've already yeah. they've already lost a game that they nope. should have won. My gosh. Like I feel I feel that Louisville will be able to pass the ball around around a Notre Dame in this game here. So I I'm I'm gonna pick I'm going to pick Louisville here to, to keep it really, really interesting. So give, give me give me the Cardinals. I like Louisville to both win and cover. Um, yeah, I win and cover for Louisville. And this is a rank on rank, so that's not a chaos theory pick for the record. Fun stat, Jared. Their leading running back here. Running backs have only 19 and 16 carries for the year. Louisville. Interesting. Very interesting. They have they have five running five running backs that have more than 10 carries. Also interesting. <laughs> just 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 something just yeah, it is sure. interesting, but interesting. But 
but let's find out what what else is interesting is is uh, Sun Card's pick here, and he says, "I can see Notre Dame being in search of style points and attempting to run it up on Louisville." He says he picks Notre Dame by fourteen. Okay, I'm still caught up on the fact that he was born in Kansas. <laughs> Like he he lives out on the East Coast. I won't say specifically what state because I don't I don't know if he wants me to say it. He's born in Kansas. I've yet to figure out why he's an Ohio State fan. I've never mm-hmm. asked because where's the fun in asking? But he's an interesting character, so because he's cool. That's actually a valid point. His 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 tarot cards may have told him to be an Ohio State fan. All right, moving on to... Is there a tarot card that's just a Buckeye tree? Mm. The tarot knowers, let me know in the uh, comments. All right, next game here, Georgia and Alabama. Georgia and Alabama. 7.30 kickoff. This is pretty much a pick em, but on paper here, it has the Bulldogs as a one and a half point favorite heading on over... To to Tuscaloosa, fun fact, Jared. Yeah, did did you know? I do because you put it in the Discord oh, no, earlier you're today. Spo- you're so, you're, so, you're, so, you're, so, you're oh, I'm sorry. supposed to play along here. I the no, last... I, I don't know, Kyle. What what is it? <laughs> the last the last win for Georgia over Alabama in Tuscaloosa, mm-hmm. Alabama, was in 2007. Now back when back when, back when Stafford was the quarterback for the Bulldogs. How many times? Because so back when the SEC East and the SEC West was actually a thing, which was just last year, one was in the East, one was in the West. What? How many times have they played in Tuscaloosa in that? Because it's not like it was every other year the way it would be if they were in the same division, if that makes sense. So it has been since 2007 since Georgia won in Tuscaloosa, but how many opportunities have they had is my question to you. Since 2007? Yeah. Let's see. How many times have they lost in Tuscaloosa since 2007, I guess, is is the more precise way of saying that. Uh, I can think of a, a fourth way to explain it while you look it up if you need me to, to think of a fourth way to say it while you look it up and I vamp for time. Once. One. See? So, no offense, Kyle, but that's that kind of lost its luster. <laughs> Critical thinking, man. You got you to gotta, you gotta ask the follow-up questions. You got to ask the follow-up yep. questions. And, and that was in 2020. That, see, that doesn't yeah. even count. And Alabama, and Alabama beat them 41 to 24. Nothing happened in 2020 that matters. I, there, I said it. Um. I'm taking Alabama. I mean, it might feel obvious to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway, to win and cover. Um, You know, one point. That's one point, right? I think all of the off-field shenanigans with Georgia are... This this is where, you know, it's not like they've played total cupcakes up to this point, because they haven't. But, you know, they had a, a close game against the Kentucky team, who's not nearly as good as, as, as Alabama, even a post-Nick Saban Alabama. Is this a team that's had a lot of self-induced off-field distractions during the offseason, and I think even once already during the season? Um, yeah, I'm, I think a... I think a distraction filled off season finally catches up with Georgia in this game. Alabama wins. Alabama covers. Give me the Crimson Tide. Mm-hmm. I I agree with Jared. I, I Bama got, I got, struggled I, with USF though, too. Alabama always struggles with USF. That's a thing. It's like Ohio State struggling against Purdue. It's just expected. I, I got, I got Alabama. Weird. I got Alabama as well here one thing one thing like looking at the two teams here georgia 
Georgia's not not as effective on the ground um, so far this season. And even with the teams that they've played, uh, Clemson, which they, they had success, they had success uh, against Clemson. Um, Tennessee Clemson Tech sucks, kind of, and no recent results are going to convince me otherwise. Mm-hmm. And they played Texas Tech, which that was it was a blowout there. But then looking at looking at Kentucky, there like they they struggled, they struggled quite a bit against against Tucky and only putting up thirteen points to them. And Alabama, Alabama is doing everything that they need to uh, so far this season. They completely, on final score wise, they they've been they've been blowing out teams here as as they should. While Georgia recently hasn't here, so in Tuscaloosa here, and Georgia is favored. Yeah, I'll I'll pick Alabama. I mean, it's it's one point per you know where CBS locked it in for our slip picks. So it's not much of a favor, but hey, who knows? It could it, it, it could matter it's, in the it, end. It says it's now Georgia. Well, it, it's the same. It says Georgia two, but one and a half. It's it, it's the same. So yeah. All right. Sun card. Sun card says big statement game here for the new coach in town. Can he deliver the goods? Georgia squeaked out of Kentucky, but don't find a win here. Bama by seven. Oh boy, that's all three of us again. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle. The game that we maybe didn't expect to be a game during the offseason, but maybe actually kind of looks like a game in the Big Ten this year. Yeah. Raise your hand if you predicted this game to be a top 20 matchup. No, sir. No, sir. We got two we got two Big Ten undefeated giants going at it. <laughs> I have said since the beginning of the sloop cast, which is either nine or 10 years, depending upon how we ended that argument last week. Um, that Illinois is a sleeping giant. There's no reason for Illinois not to be a good football team other than the fact that they haven't been. Illinois should be a good football team. They should have the resources. They should have the talent base. Is Bert the guy to do it, or is this just some some recency bias? Some I'm eager to find out. I think Illinois is a sleeping giant. I and I've yeah. said it for ten years. They just need momentum. Illinois just needs momentum to be a legitimate college football team. And this is a set. This is a 7.30 kickoff on NBC. Bum, bum, bum. It, it is in, it is in uh, Happy Valley here. State College, PA. 17 and a half for Penn State. Too PA. many points. I, I'm, I must be missing something. I must be missing something. Like, I, I have no idea. I have no idea why why this why this uh number is so high. And I'm looking at the number now. It's gone up to 18 and a half now. Penn State has run up the points against some bad teams in recent weeks. I mean, we did put them back into A tier well, on they, 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 Collegiate they, they Chaos against, on Tuesday. They they did against Kent Kent State, but let's let, yeah. l- look at the uh look at the previous uh Mac team that they played. I know. I'm well aware. Was that Bowling Green they struggled against? Is that who that was? Mm-hmm. It was. It let, was. Let, can I play the to be fair game for a second? LSU also struggled against Bowling Green last week. Fair. Maybe that's a Bowling Green thing. Maybe. Maybe those Falcons are actually kind of good. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say that, but maybe the Falcons are actually kind of good. Are they, are they the... Uh... Are they the the best uh, brown and orange team in the country? They're the best brown and orange team in all of football. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> best brown and orange team in the state of Ohio. All of football, Kyle. The entirety of the American football sport. All right. If that if that says anything, I got I got Illinois. <laughs> I got <laughs> Illinois to cover here. 
Bowling Green would kill the Browns. And I'm obviously being super serious when I say that. Um, yeah, I do think Penn State wins this game. Don't get me wrong. I might be buying into the Illinois hype a little. I might be playing it up a bit for the podcast. I might be playing up my Illinois hype a slight amount for the podcast. I I do think Penn State wins this game. But 17 feels like a ton of points. I do I do expect yeah. Penn State to win. I expect Penn State to win by two scores even. Yeah. I really like 9 their, I really 10 like... 11 12 13 points, but 17? Yeah, I Piscataway. I mean, I, re- I really like uh Illinois quarterback uh, Luke Altmeyer. Yeah, yeah, I He's do too. Very accurate. He's over 71% completion. He has 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions for yeah. the year. Uh, last I, I watched year, I watched him for the last, first time. Uh, Kyle talked about we had a barn burner for our last Friday night pick for the mm-hmm. sloop picks. It was that game. I, this is the first time I sat down yeah. and watched Altmeyer throw uh, the ball, and I was very last impressed. Year, last year, he only threw 13 touchdowns and 10 interceptions last year. He's off to a hot start compared to to last year. And Who he, did he play already, for last year? Illinois. Oh, was it? I thought it was. I thought this the, was his first year, year in Illinois. Was it? Uh, no, his first two years were at Ole Miss. And yeah, he transferred to Illinois last year. Um, and he he's he's almost at half already at half the yards that he had last year already. Yeah, so I, he's off to I, a hot start here. Drew Aller. Drew Aller has has had like so much hype with him. Um. You're a lot of that's of been Medina, from me. Medina, Ohio here. We thought he was going to be come in that's and a, do really well That's a lot here. of Jared-led hype, if we're being honest. But he's just, yeah, he just, he's just struggling. He's just kind of just missing the mark here. And I, I don't know what it is here. So I'm, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick the hotter quarterback here. And I think this is going to be a dogfight and Illinois may have a chance to, uh, to win this game. So you are taking Illinois, Illinois as well. Oh yeah, I picked Illinois. What right. does? Uh, yeah, he's a big, big game. Franklin always has his team ready to turtle. By the way, just real <laughs> quick, I'm not sure because I looked this up, and maybe it's because I am. I I do like Drew Aller. Just sue me. Forty-one completions on fifty-eight attempts, seventy percent completion percentage, seven hundred and thirty yards, eight touchdowns, only one interception. I'm not sure where you're getting that Drew Aller is not having a good year, or that he's having a that that that, that was severely um, inflated from his Kent State game, where he he was like over eighty percent completion, and the the other the other two games he was barely over sixty. Yeah, but he th- did throw three touchdowns against West Virginia. Okay. Was still s- almost 65%. I mean, okay. I don't know. I I might be a Drew Aller apologist. I'll own that if that's the case, but I think you're being too harsh. All right, that's fair. Uh, so Suncard says, Big Game Franklin always has his team ready to turtle. This isn't the game... Uh, Brett put nine offensive linemen on the field and ran our 43 times. In one a few in one a few years ago, I'll take the guys in orange with the points. All right, Kyle. Uh, we already picked the Ohio State, uh, Michigan State game. I'll go ahead and slide the coins ceremoniously. Uh, we of course did that on the Thursday episode of the Sloopcast called "Know Your Enemy," called "Know Your Enemy," Michigan State. If you want mm-hmm. our detailed thought process on that game go ahead and listen to that episode and since i'm already kind of doing an ad let's go ahead and kick it over to the ads when we come back from the ads we're going to pick our chaos theory pick and if you're new here we will explain to you what a chaos theory pick is but uh we don't need to do a i I do want to throw the graphic up real quick just because i spent a lot of time making it (laughs) graphic uh but yeah the uh We're going to do the quick ad break and we will be right back. All right, Kyle, it's time for chaos theory. 
If you are new here, Chaos Theory, you here are the rules. You must pick an unranked team to defeat a ranked team. The points you get are the inverse of that of the losing team's rankings. For example, last week, Z Spikes picked Kansas State to lose. They did, in fact, lose. This is a terrible example because 13 translates into 13. <laughs> so 13th place gets you 13th point, but please, that that's 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 an outlier. That's just only the number 13 does that. Um I picked Missouri to lose because uh, in Missouri was ranked. Uh, Missouri was ranked uh, seventh. Yes. Thank you, Kyle. Seventh. Missouri is ranked seventh. Therefore, so that would have. I know math's hard for you. I know math's hard for you. You have every other time you've tried to determine the point value for this. You've messed up on the show. So I don't want to hear it. I have a cheat sheet. I don't need to do mental math. There's a cheat sheet in the top right-hand corner of the graphic that's on the screen. I will zoom in on it if you need me to. Okay. Do you want me to? <laughs> yeah, um, it's all good. All right. So the point is, is that, like, for example, the seventh ranked team is worth 19 points, or I should just say that the first ranked team is worth 25 points and the 25th ranked team is worth one point. That's a lot easier to understand. I don't know why I just don't do that all the time. You get the point. You understand. Yeah. Uh, All right. Since 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 the guest speaker, since the guest speakers are winning, let, let's start with them. Let's start with them here. They have uh, some card says here. The cop out answer is Baylor over BYU. So I have to, I, so to have some real chaos. I have Wisconsin over over universe, University of Southern S Central. Of South Central? That's a joke, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it's a joke. USC. USC. Yeah. Yeah, I, I looked at that. I, I looked at the BYU game, but uh, mm -hmm. as he correctly points out, that's not worth much points. I think that's a super solid pick if you're just trying to get any points. To get on the board, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that that pick makes a lot of sense. But as he points out, BYU, what is BYU ranked? 22nd. 22nd. So 22nd only would have been worth four points. Mm -hmm. 13 is our number. I like it, says Spikes. Yeah. The second week in a row, the guest pickers are are picking number yeah. 13 for 13 points. It's their lucky number, weirdly. I think there are two, I think there's like five pretty good options. Um, right. And and I think that picking Wisconsin to beat USC is one of those pretty good five options. I think there are two options that to me, based off of not necessarily likelihood, but value, if you're trying to get a lot of points, um, I think that... I'm I'm going to go. What What is happening here? Sorry, having some Photoshop problems. There we go. I'm once again going to shoot for the moon for the second week in a row. I'm going to predict the seventh team in the country to lose. However, this time that team is Miami. This is on a Friday night. So we're going to find out real quick if I get on the board or not this week. Uh, they are facing Virginia Tech. Now. If you haven't been paying attention to Virginia Tech. Let me let me give you a quick synopsis of what Virginia Tech has done this year. Ready to play along? Ready to have some fun? Sure. 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 Let's talk about Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech lost to Vanderbilt in week one in an overtime game. We've seen Vanderbilt since then actually be play some really good teams really closely. So Vanderbilt may be better than we thought, but they lose to Vanderbilt. They defeat Marshall, allowing 14 points, which is to be noted, the same amount of points that Ohio State let Marshall score. 
uh, in a 31 to 14 game. They defeated Old Dominion in non-spectacular fashion. Sure. Then they lost to Rutgers, but they only lost to Rutgers by three. And as we pointed out earlier in the show, Rutgers is, despite the fact that they're Rutgers, actually a really solid football team. So despite the fact that Virginia Tech is sitting there at two and two, not necessarily all that impressive. I like the chaos that a Friday night brings. I feel like the dis the disruption of the normal schedule favors the quote unquote lesser teams. This is being played in Miami, which doesn't mean shit. They have no home field advantage in that stadium. I I I like the I like the potential chaos of a Friday night. Tens of fans, dozens maybe. I like the I like Friday night potential chaos. I'm going to go with a team that has lost twice this year but lost very closely. Once in overtime, once to three points against solid football teams, not teams that are necessarily as good as Miami, granted. But I'm I'm going for that Friday night kicker. Fair enough. Give me Virginia Tech to beat Miami for my week five chaos theory pick. All right. In in good slipcast fashion here, I'm going to try to one up you on this, Jared. Is this, I wonder if what? this is going to be, I said there were two that I liked more than the others. I said that there were two I liked more I'm, than the others. I wonder if you're about to pick the others or the other. Uh, well, this one's going to be, if they win, would be 20 points. This would be 20 points. All right. So I got, he's calling the score right away at 20. This team has played close to one of the top ranked teams recently here. And and last week they they did really well against um, a Mac team that they really should have here, and the team they're going up against hasn't really hasn't really played anybody so far. They haven't been tested. So I, Kentucky, yeah, has been tested. They almost beat Georgia. They they know they know the kind of game that they're they're up against here. Ole Miss hasn't really been tested here. So the numbers the numbers are inflated here. Kentucky will keep them keep them in check and they're, it's going to be close and going to put them in position to have a chance to win here. So, yeah, my my chaos here is the Wildcats upsetting the Rebels. That was the other one. I said they were okay. there. There, I think there are a few good options. I think Suncard got one of them with uh, Wisconsin USC. There's obviously BYU, which he also mentioned, the, which I think the is a, one, I think is a good just like get on the board pick. Um, Minnesota picking, uh, winning over Michigan isn't ridiculous. And that's a, an okay amount of points. Um, there's, there's two other, there's two other games I was kind of interested in. Um, first one is the Clemson and Stanford game. Uh, Stanford did have that, uh, great win over, uh, Syracuse last week. So yeah. maybe they could build off some some uh momentum there but the other game i was kind of interested in here i'm like oh it, it's this game could be um possibly interesting now hear me out oh boy they, they played all the best predictions start with hear me out yeah the jaguars oh did really well did really well last last week here and lsu has been kind of yeah. yeah, yeah, they they've they've eventually put teams away here, but but LSU is like, whoa, 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 hold on, what what's what's happening to LSU here? They 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 they're kind of struggling a little bit here. So yeah, I I think that one could be a could be close at like halftime here. So yeah, I, I don't we, I don't see the Jaguars pulling that <laughs> off though. I, I I I am very quick to hate on LSU. I think they're overrated. I hear you. But this team lost to North Texas and Ohio. And that's fair. And that's a fair point. Yes. Uh, I, this, re I really wanted I really wanted to pick Arizona over Utah here, but 
I, Arizona's I, been stru- they they're struggling so hard on offense yeah. so far this year. Yeah, so yeah. hard. If they, if they if they had a little bit more fight in them and scored a little bit more points this year, yeah, I might have picked Arizona. But you only put up seven to Kansas State. You only put up twenty two to Northern Arizona. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I think there's a, but here, I, I think we've made our picks. Our picks are on the screen. Those are our picks, but I, I think are. what Kyle and I are pointing out when we talk about all these other ones is that there is huge chaos potential this week. And ultimately the kicker for me, cause I, I looked real long and hard. I, I think Kyle made an excellent pick with, with Ole Miss for 20 points. And I almost went with that pick too simply because it was one point more than Miami. That was it. That was, but ultimately I decided I wanted the Friday night game. Cause I, I think that that schedule disruption just ekes things towards the lower talent team. It's just, it's just one more factor that can screw up the, the normal vibe and can lead to some chaos, right? That was ultimately the tiebreaker for me. But the, but the takeaway here, the takeaway here, in my opinion, is there's a, a lot of chaos potential on the board. Um, and that's not even talking about the fact that number two and number four are playing each other. Number 15 and number 16 are playing each other. Mm-hmm. Number 20 and number 23 are playing each other. We're going to, we're going to face some chaos this weekend. Like our Kyle, we had, we had to, if anyone who watched the Tuesday show, which is called collegiate chaos, we had to shuffle the tier list a lot this week. And I think we're going to have to shuffle the tier list. I, this is my feeling anyway. I think we're gonna have to shuffle the tier list a lot next week again. All right. That is it. That is that is our salute picks uh episode here. Uh, hopefully hopefully Jared and I can get on the board here for uh <laughs> for the uh, chaos theory uh picks here. So but we'll we'll see here. But yeah, I th- I think I think we'll start seeing more and more uh team chaos happening moving forward. It's a damn shame none of us got in on any of that Florida State action. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't even pick week zero. I know that that was the bitch of it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do we didn't do chaos theory week zero. All right. Um Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh I was looking and looking and I can't find anything. <laughs> I'll be That's honest. Fair. I, I could I couldn't find anything. Listen, so. Kyle, this is the toughest because like we record this on Tuesday. We just recorded two episodes on Sunday. We record two episodes tonight because if anyone doesn't know, we put out four episodes a week, but we only record two nights a week. And those are that's Sunday and Tuesday. Like, you guys are watching this on Friday. We recorded it on Tuesday, which is actually a really good reason to join the Patreon because Spikes and, and Buckeye Esquire and Austin, they get to listen to it now. Y'all have to wait till Friday. The point, however, being $3 a month. It's a good deal. Always be plugging. The point being, I may have lost my point. I, I may I maybe don't remember what the point is. Um, no, the point being is that it's really hard to come up with a fourth uh, Kyle's corner in 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 two days or three days. <laughs> it's 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 not it's not an easy not an easy task. All right, Kyle. Uh, tonight's ending music. Once again, brought to you by Mr. Moon. It's a Columbus-based band. Mr. is spelled out, so that is Mr. Moon. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Mr. Moon.